So let's quickly review what we know about radicals. This is stuff that we should be familiar with. And all you need to do is simplify. So let's just go through these problems quickly and see what you guys remember. What would you say to this guy, this square root of 144? 12? Yes, life is easy. What if I have this guy? Hopefully you know how to read this. Don't say the threeth root. Yeah. <laughs> say the cube root. Wait, hold on. You guys need backup. Just hold on, hold on. The reason I got 12 is because I was thinking what number squared would give me 144? That's kind of the thought process for the square root of 144. What squared gives you 144? So here you're trying to think what to the third power equals negative 27. What's that response? Negative 3. Right? We can have negatives. I mean, you, yeah. if you put a negative inside this guy, a negative cubed is still a negative, so we're okay with that. <coughs> I think you guys are thinking about something else that's going to be coming up very shortly. What about the square root of 100x squared? If you look at this as the square root of 100, you get 10. <coughs> if you have the square root of x squared, you get x. Now, we're going to have the assumption that our variables represent non-negative values, because if x could represent a negative number, well, that means something different in terms of how we respond. All right? Is everybody okay with that so far? These are the easy problems, like a fun quiz. All right, how about the fifth root of 32? What's that thought process you have to think about? What to a fifth equal 32? So if you have a list of powers, you should be able to easily go down that list and find something to the fifth that equals 32. So you've got that, right, from last semester? I don't have it with me. You don't have it with oh. I didn't make it. Oh, but I see that. Oh. Not on everything. Most things, yes. But some things, no. Then what is it? Two. The answer here is just... But it would be 32 carat one-fifth, right? Right. If we're going to use our calculators... Let me go ahead and throw that up here for you guys. The, f the fifth root... Um, Th there is a way of doing it that's very ugly. <coughs> if you go into math, you see option number five here that says, it looks like it's got the little x there that's the same thing as your index. So if you were to press five and then that, so if I were to press five. Okay, now see, this is what it does to me here because of the particular version of the operating system. So I can actually type in what looks like the fifth root of 32. Sorry, excuse me, and I get two. Now, some of you, depending on the way your calculator is set up, if you were to do that same setup, that's what your fifth root would look like. If you have a TI-83, or if you're using some of the older ones like the TI-85, this is what you would, you would have here. You would have five, and this means the nth root, so the fifth root, and you would type in 32. Notice that it doesn't put parentheses there to start you out. So you get two. And what I said about parentheses, if you do the square root, so second x squared, it starts off with parentheses. Okay. But you don't get that here with option five with the nth root. You do with the cube root, though. But like Jess was saying, you can also use exponents. If you remember, we talked about exponents before. The fifth root is the same as 32 raised to the one-fifth power. So let me make a note of that for you here. This guy is the same as 32 raised to the one-fifth power. Now, be careful with this, though. 
if you are not careful and you just do 32 raised to the one-fifth like that, the calculator is going to do exactly what you tell it to do. And in this case, it's going to do 32 raised to the first power, divide which is 32, that. and then divide that by 5. So we end up with 6.4. And that's not it depends what on you the want. Calculator, mine, I don't have to do the parentheses. Just do carat 1 divided by 5, and it spits it out. Now hold on, though. Are you with math print on your mode? So if I do 32 raised to the one-fifth like this, if I'm in that math print mode, if I've got a TI-84 that has that version of the operating system, then you're right. I can do that, and it's going to show up exactly the way I mean for it to show up. But what I would like to do for these yeah, videos, what I want to do for these videos is to keep this in the classic mode. That way, if you don't have that math print function on there, you don't have that option, then you'll still be able to follow along. Because not every TI-84 <coughs> is, is set up that way. How do you do that? Do what? No, where it actually shows up on the mode. If you're in mode, the second screen here, you've got math print versus classic. You may not have that mm -hmm. option available to you. Mine just has one screen. Then you, then you have a, an older operating system. That's OK. Ideally, just leave it on math print. That's if, if you're OK with the math print, that's fine. I'll do it in the classic mode. So if you're using a TI-83 or 84 normal, or 84 plus doesn't have that latest operating system, then you're good. All right. So we've, we've seen that. Let's uh, keep <coughs> on trucking with these examples. There's you know what? I, there's just something that I really like about working with radicals. I guess it's all the ex exponents. I love exponents. What's negative the square root of 49? Negative if I had the square root of 49, what is that? <coughs> 7. Then I put a negative on that, so that's <coughs> negative 7. And you know what? If you don't believe me, you can type that into your calculator. If I were to type in negative the square root of 49, that gives me negative 7. I guess you guys can't really see that. Yeah. Is that better? But what if I change things up a little bit and I were to say the square root of negative 25? Five I. Five. Yeah, you, so you bring up the I stuff. We haven't quite talked about that yet. So under normal circums, normal circumstances, if mm -hmm. you were to type this in, negative one in there. if I type in square root of negative twenty-five, uh, it gives me an error. It says non-real answer. But of course, if you're telling me the answer is five I, I is what? What does the I represent? Imaginary. It, re it represents the imaginary unit. So we're talking about imaginary numbers. So you see that if I put this in the calculator, it's not going to be real. Now, you can either quit or go to it. This really right here is a nice analogy for how we deal with life's problems. You can either quit or you can go to and fix the problem. Now, if you go to, sometimes it'll tell you where the issue is. So it's telling me the issues with the parentheses because, well, if I end the parentheses right here, then the radicand, the stuff inside the radical, is negative. And since it's a square root, negative radicands are not allowed to be real or to <coughs> still have a real answer. But here's what you can do. Go to your mode and look here towards the bottom. You've got something that says real. Then you have a plus b i. And then don't even worry about this guy right here. Just ignore that one. a plus b i is that standard form for a complex number that we're going to talk about in just a moment. So if I have it in that form, this tells my calculator, all right, we can deal with complex numbers. So if I quit out of this and now I hit enter, now it gives me the 5i. Okay, Now I get the 5i. But right now, what I want to say here is this guy right here is not a real number. In a moment, we're going to change that back to stuff that we are familiar with. 